So um, I get the task to talk about um, psychometer histology and what should we do. And um, first, I mean, um, something that has been discussed before it has been in the room uh, with the non-clear histology talk is um, uh, um, how, how do we classify psychomotoric tissue? And um, actually, it, it is not a specific entity. It, it, what it really shows you is de-differentiation over time. Um, and it has a highly malignant behavior, and that is what is written in the WHO uh, criteria, basically. Um, and it, how is it being perceived in the different the guidelines? Um, so uh, in EAU, um, they do address this, so say it's not a distinct entity, and uh, it has a poor prognosis, and um, has poor response to systemic therapy, and in ESMO, it, it has not been really classified. And this is a case of my patients um, we treated a couple of years ago. So this is somebody who presented with a CNS lesion, two lung lesions, and a, a, um, a renal mass. And you kind of question, you know, you know what do you do? But this is symptomatic CNS um, uh, metastasis. So we took it out, actually. And what it showed was clear cell histology. And then you kind of, you know, we could discuss what do you do next? Do you do surgery? Do you do medical treatment? Um, we took out the kidney, basically. And uh, here it is. I mean, it's sarcomatoid. Um, so it kind of shows you that um, whatever you see in these um, tumors, it, it is heterogeneous, and um, because there are areas of de-differentiation, and these are the one, these are the drivers, I would say, for uh, the clinical behavior, for aggressiveness, basically. Um, so we put her in sunitinib, nice response, but you, again, you see there is a um, distinct response. So here, a uh, large lesion um, beside the heart. Uh, it, it went basically into CR, uh, and this one up here did not really change, so we took it out. Uh, and what it showed, it was um, sarcomatoid tissue, basically. So we did watch and wait, um, recurrence, uh, again, surgery. It has predominant uh, sarcomatoid tissue in here. Um, so it really, you know, we, we were going back and forward between um, surgery, surgery, TKI treatment, or chemotherapy in this, in this patient. Um, and basically it was guided by histology because sometimes there has been predominant sarcomatoid tissue and sometimes there has been clear cell RCC. So it really kind of, I think, reflects um, the problems that we have because uh, if you look in, in a histology, um, this is the sarcomatoid tissue, and this is the clear cell part, basically. So the um, question would be, you know, what, what is really relevant here for, uh, for the prognosis of these patients? And there's some data looking into um, the sarcomatoid content, um, looking that there's a difference um, if it's present or not, so looking for progression-free survival. It's about 6 versus 16 months. And um, in this work, um, they said, you know, once you have uh, sarcomatoid tissue, which is beyond the 20% range, uh, you will have uh, a poor outcome. But it's not so clear cut. Um, so if you look for um, a different analysis, it will give you a little bit a distinct flavor. Um, here again, um, different therapies, but it's dominated by sunitinib, basically, and uh, the median sarcomatoid tissue content has been about 20%. Um, so the readout is here, um, so there's response to sunitinib, yes. Um, um, the rest of the curve, I would say, you know, it cannot be judged because of the mixed uh, therapies that have been implied here. And um, they looked also into um, tissue uh, and activity of, of pathways. And something that has been quite striking, I think, is that in, in clear cell RCC, um, that have um, sarcomatoid tissue, you see an upregulation of the mTOR pathway, basically, and has been shown in these um, um, resected tumors. Whereas, if you have sarcomatoid tissue in the non-clear cell RCC, um, it did not show that. But um, again, this is very small numbers. But at least it gives you a hint that you know mTOR uh, might play a role here. Um, so Martin Forst then um, looked into um, m activity in sarcomatoid uh, RCC, and you've seen part of that data before when, when Cora talked about the non-clear cell. So in sarcomatoid, it's only 23 patients, and there's some response to, to m inhibitors kind of um, uh, um, suggesting that it, it may play a role uh, in this disease. But again, you know, progression-free survival, 3.5, overall survival, 8.7 months. Um, it, it's still within the range um, of other therapies as well. So um, this is um, 
and the IMDC data on, on um, sarcomatid versus non sarcomatid uh, RCC, and it really shows that it, it is a rare. Uh, it's about 10% of the total population. Um, it is associated with poor risk. Um, those patients have an uh, earlier res uh, recurrence rate. Um, even though response rate does not differ that much, um, they have a higher fraction of primary refractory tumors and progression-free survival, and OS is about half of that, what you would expect from the other tumors. Um, so in, in this scenario, you, you kind of question, um, what about chemotherapy? Because this is an aggressive tumor, um, rapid growth, um, is that something we could target by chemotherapy? And um, well, there is a retrospective series, it's 28 cases, uh, using gencitabine, capecitabine, and BEF um, as a triple combination. Um, and they looked into um, subgroups, either with or without sarcomatoid tissue, and will tell you that there is um, a worse outcome with those um, that have sarcomatoid tissue, but overall the group um, does not do so well, actually. But, but still, there's activity. Um, gemcitabin doxorubicin have, has been um, a paradigm for uh, treatment of mesenchymal tumors in RCC. So um, this is a study looking for um, rapid progressive RCC um, or those with sarcomatoid uh, features. It's retrospective um, and used um, gemcitabin doxorubicin and either with or without sarcomatoid um, features, it, it has responses. Um, of course, I mean, uh, relative responses of 30, 50%, given the low number of patients is not really helpful, but um, it, it shows you that there is response to uh, chemotherapy, which we think uh, uh, is not helpful in the clear cell uh, RCC type, usually. So that eventually led to the um, first line assessment of GEMDOCs, um, in uh, sarcomatoid RCC, and this is the spider blood. So you see there's uh, response in some of these patients, um, and, and, and some of them don't respond at all, of course, and uh, there, there is an overall response rate of 16% um, to an aggressive combination of chemotherapy. Um, and uh, um, there is, um, in, in those that have a higher content of sarcomatoid features, there may be a better response. But overall, progression-free survival, again, 3.5, and overall survival of 8.8 .8 months. Um, and the latest news is about gemcitabine in combination with sunitinib, um, so kind of being the best of both worlds, and uh, looking for uh, um, gemcitabine um, infusion uh, day one, day eight, and a two-week schedule of sunitinib, basically. Um, 35 patients, and there's a response. 11 patients responded. Um, there um, is a progression-free survival, which is 5.3 months, which is quite encouraging. Uh, response rate of 31% and, and overall survival uh, approaching 11 months. So in conclusion, um, so sarcomatoid histology is really a poor prognostic feature, and it's not bound to a single entity. It, uh, it may appear in any of those subgroups of RCC. Um, and uh, target therapies exert some activity. We have seen that, but it's inferior to what we, we know um, it, it may deliver in, um, in clear cell carcinoma. Uh, chemotherapy has been shown to be effective. Uh, and for now, I think gemcitabine and uh, seems to be the best of both worlds. Thank you.